Now, it's the new documentary that's got America talking. It charts the career of Britney Spears, from perfect pop princess to the dark side of her life in the spotlight. Uh, it's not yet released here in the UK, uh, but the programme explores her rise to fame as a Disney child star, the press coverage of that breakdown in 2007, being hounded by the paparazzi and her relationship and final breakup with Justin Timberlake. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing this, actually, because, you know, when you see that all together, you realise how much went on mm. in that woman's life. Um, you must be able to relate to some of that. How old were you when you started? Um, I was 12. 12? Um, yeah. When so I was before the Juniors. Saturdays? Yeah. So I was in a pop group called S Club Juniors when I was younger. And obviously, our level of success was nothing like Britney Spears, so I'm not trying to compare myself. But, you know, it's that same thing for me and lots of young people that have been oh. in the spotlight. It's really hard to, um, you know, be successful when you're so young and then to try and continue that when you're older. And I think that's where, for me personally, I think a lot of the problems come from because you've had this successful career and then you've still got so much of your life left to be successful and you feel like that's who you are and that's what you have to be. And I think as a child, you do take on a lot of worries for other people. Mm. You know, I felt like I had to be successful for my parents, my friends, and that's what was expected. How are your parents about you wanting to, to be in S Club Juniors in the first place? Were they nervous about it? Was it yeah. they encouraged you? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not until I've become a parent myself that I actually really feel for them in that situation because, you know, they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do we kind of essentially hand our child over to someone else um, and let her begin this career in the public mm. eye? Or do we say no and really risk her resenting us for the rest of our lives. And, you know, personally for me, I feel like they made the right decision. Um, and, you know, I often think of that with my kids, what decision would I make? Um, and it's a hard one until you're put in it. And I think they are essentially handing you over. I was really lucky. We were really protected. I had a really good team around me. Um, I still talk to a lot of them now, but I don't feel like that's the case for everybody. I didn't have pushy parents, um, but I still essentially ended up having a mental breakdown when I was 21. Would that have happened if I wasn't in the public eye? I, I don't know. Mm. And I can see why it happens to so many people and, you know, why they turn to drug use and things like that, because it is, it's hard to keep that high and that level mm. of success. Do you remember the moment that the S Club Junior thing sort of stopped and then suddenly you were back being a young person, maybe back at school again. And, yeah. and do you remember feeling that pressure? Yeah, I kind of, you know what, at first it was a novelty. I, I worked in a shop and I worked in a bar and all of my friends were in college, so they were around and I was hanging out with them. And, and, it, and it wasn't until someone would make a comment to me like, oh, aren't you that girl that was in S Club Juniors? Mm. Oh, now you're working in a shop. And I'd be like, oh, um, yeah. And it wasn't until all my friends then started applying for uni that then I was like, well, what am I going to do? Where do I go from here? I don't have A-levels. I just about scraped by my GCSEs. Where does that leave me? It's, and I was like, what, 16? Oh, really Already not. worrying I about mean, the rest of my life. Denise, yeah. Frankie's talking there about her parents. I mean, you are a parent of two boys, you know, a musician and an actor. Um, yeah. And obviously an actress yourself. Did you have mixed feelings about them going into, you know, showbiz, essentially? Well, I was, I was, very, I was very lucky that... They neither of them um, had any real childhood ambitions. In, in fact, Tim, their dad, was absolutely against them doing anything in the business. They weren't wanting that particularly, but as, the, as a result of us being in that business, a couple of opportunities came around. And I remember once um, Matthew, when he was about 11, had gone with a friend and um, who, who was, whose dad was letting him audition for a commercial. Matthew got asked if he wanted to go in. The guy said, have you done this before, Matthew? And he said, no, but I feel I can handle the role. It was for a topic commercial. Now, I remember they rang me at Coronation Street and told me he'd been offered this job and it was to fly to Lithuania for two days. Tim said, absolutely not. He's not even going to hear about it. Matthew did start his band at 14 in, in the garage at home, but it was not until his early 20s that things kind of rocketed. But I, I, I found that hard because I felt that I was living my life seeing Matthew backstage at concerts. And I found that incredibly hard. So to be, because obviously, like Frankie said, that life takes over when you become big and there's all these different managers and stuff. And Matthew was always on a world tour. 
So I found it very, very difficult to just be sort of in a line to see Matty. He's trying to get to me. I'm trying to get to him. Now, if that had happened when he was younger, I would have found that devastating. I also, as an actress, have worked with many, many kids who don't want to be there. We're covering it in, in Hollyoaks at the moment. I'm playing a dance teacher who is actually pushing the kids far too far for her own ambitions. So it really can destroy, it destroys some children. We've all seen the delusion as well that shows like The X Factor come up with. But, you know, when, when these kids clearly haven't got what it takes, but they've been told by a mom and dad who might be trying to live through their kids that they have. So that's yeah. devastating as well. Sides, so you've got to be very, sides, very careful. Yeah. Definitely two sides. Yeah, parents, and Louis, and as then, I say, like... Louis, Louis, didn't, Louis, Louis wants to be an actor because of his craft. Both my kids have seen the absolute downside of this business as well. So it's not about fame. It's about loving what they do. And there's a difference between being an encouraging parent and a pushy parent. Yeah, and your... I hope I'm the first one. Of course you are, Denise. <laughs> did your parents ever say they felt they weren't part of your life, that it couldn't get to you? So how many yeah. of you in this club? Yeah, there was eight of eight. us. Um, I think, yeah, I think there definitely was a part of that for them. And, you know, now I'm a parent, I do really feel for them in that way. Um, they did have to stay at arm's length. Um, but I think, you know, for me, um, I was allowed to be a child. They wanted us to be children. We were supposed to be young and fun. Whereas I think with Brittany, there's a bit of a mix there. I think it's difficult. She was supposed to be this sexy thing, but also this young, innocent thing. Whereas I didn't have that pressure, same pressure that she had. Yeah. Do you think if the papers were reporting, we were briefly, Jane, because we're nearly at the break. I was I know. Say, yeah. They're just, saying 10 seconds. I'm yeah. not going to say but much in that time. Do you think they would report it differently now? Would we have to be kinder? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Time is the, is the short <laughs> in time <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, well, really interesting. It's really interesting. To, I didn't realise you started that young, actually. Yeah. I thought you started mm -hmm. with the Saturdays. Um, we've got lots more.